Stay fresh. Stay fresh. Yo, so how's it going guys? Welcome back to another GTA 5 video. So as I'm sure you guys are all aware by now, two days ago Rockstar Games released a massive Smugglers Run DLC, which included a bunch of new stuff from vehicles, properties, clothing. I actually done a full showcase of all of the content on my channel, so I will leave a link to the full playlist down below in the description. However, as I'm sure most of you guys are aware by now, with every big update that comes out, like the import export, the biker, or the gun running, I do always put together an ultimate money making guide going into full detail on how you guys can earn the most amount of money in the shortest period of time as well as including a bunch of tips and tricks that I personally use just to help things go much easier and cause me less stress and going off the feedback you guys always seem to enjoy these videos and on the release of this DLC I literally had over a thousand comments from you guys asking me can I put this video together for you guys I was always going to do this video for you guys however you cannot rush videos like this I have seen youtubers put together so-called hanger money guides in the first day of release yet they haven't even filled up their hangar fully and literally all they done was fill up like five crates that they got 10k each for so they just done some quick maths and said oh you can fill up 50 crates so it must be 500k per hangar which is absolutely nonsense and the worst part about this is a lot of these dudes have over a hundred thousand subscribers so I guarantee for a fact I would actually put my life on it that if you guys have watched any of these so-called hangar smugglers run money guides in the first day of release or even the first two days which it's pretty practically impossible to find out everything to cover in that guide that them dudes there have literally only put that up early to try and get views off you guys i'm pretty sure active subs on my channel know i've uploaded every single day for the last few months and yesterday i uploaded nothing at all that's because i was busy just working on this video i literally put over 25 hours into grinding this hangar just fully testing out everything so i don't leave any news or any information out of this video so in this video i'm going to be covering every single thing that you guys need to know about making money with one of these new hangers in the smugglers run dlc right from the start when you guys purchase your hangar all the way up until the end until you guys are making the final sales plus i'll go into full detail about what i personally like to do when grinding the hangers out which i found out can save you guys a bunch of time in the long run and literally earn you guys double the amount of money if you were to do it normally like a normal person was so as always if this video does help you guys out in any way shape or form which i'm sure it will do all i ask is you drop a like down below as it literally has taken me over 20 hours to put this video together and if you guys are new around here do feel free to subscribe as i do post daily gta 5 videos without further ado let's get into the video okay so first things first you guys will need to own a hangar obviously to start making money from a hangar now i would suggest you guys go ahead and purchase the cheapest hangar over at lsi which will only cost you guys around 1.2 million however these hangars do range in price all the way up to 3.2 million over at fort san kudo there is three hangars over at fort san kudo slightly more expensive than the ones at the airport so i would suggest you guys go ahead and buy one at lsi if you guys are just looking to make the most amount of money there is literally no benefit for you guys spending an extra 2 million on a hangar over at Fort San Kudo rather than just buying the 1.2 million one at the airport like I did. Now coming from someone that's always bought the most expensive stuff with these DLCs, I've learned the hard way over the years. I've always bought the most expensive stuff thinking that's going to benefit me in my videos in some way to show you guys the fair version of stuff but it never seems to be the case. It's literally only the location that makes a difference. Whether these have been the businesses from the biker update or the import export update with the vehicle warehouses even the crate missions they all pay exactly the same it's only dependent on the location now as soon as you guys actually buy your hangar you are going to get a bunch of customization options to renovate it i would suggest staying away from all of these things like the hangar style the light in the graphics or even the furniture none of that stuff is going to benefit you in any way shape or form plus you can always come back at a later date and add these things in once you've got a bit more money right now you guys are looking to save the most amount of money so you can make the most amount of money so as you guys can see right here the lighting is going to cost you guys an extra 150k and let's be real here who actually pays attention to the goddamn lighting in a hangar of course probably the best customization feature is the floor graphics because that's where you're going to be looking a lot that's where you're going to keep your aircraft so if you guys do like the aesthetics then maybe only invest in that however the two best options that i would suggest you guys definitely go ahead and invest in is the living quarters just so you guys can spawn in your hangar every time you come on gta 5 or you find a new session it saves you guys a bunch of time having to make your way 
all the way over to your hangar again and that will set you guys back around 235k and finally the workshop and obviously that's where you guys are going to be able to customize your aircraft if you guys want to add bombs on it if you want to customize the paint job but if you guys are going to buy any two features when buying a hangar for the first time the bottom two are the only two that you really need now as soon as you guys purchase your hangar and you go over to it you are going to get greeted with like a little mini cutscene kind of just running through the basics of the hangar so i'll quickly play that out for you guys just so stuff that i explain later on the video is making much more sense nonsense from you and you'll join them i've got a space weapon from russia a russian hacker space weapon and i'm going to liquidize you just like i did to your friends yes liquidize ow hi hi oh. you, you, you trying to kill me Oh, God, no! Oh, oh, you're my new partner. You bought into the place. You're late. What kept you? Yeah, well, it's too late. Ah, that bastard Trent. Uh, my best friend? Oh, he's supposed to protect me forever? Then he goes all Vinewood on me. He's too important for Ron now. Wait, he's a guru. He's a lifestyle coach. I don't know what he is. I bet he's got abs. Oh. I am so alone. I just shot two government agents in the head. I mean, I hope they're government agents. I'm screwed. We're screwed. Where's that mechanic? Oh, I mean, that's the only reason I, I let them in. Because I thought it was gonna be him. Ooh, who's that? Hey, boss. Hey, boss. Oh, hey, boss, is that what I get? Well, you're getting a sandwich. I'm getting killed. These two people came to kill me. Not him. He's your new boss. Well, a co-boss with me. This is Charlie. He was in the Air Force. He was accused of a crime he didn't commit. Innocent mistake. Planes crash. He was the fall guy. You know how the deep state is. Ch Charlie, get to work. Ignore the corpses. So, anyway. Business is good and business is bad. Now, that's a problem. On one hand, we've got more orders than we can possibly handle. And on the other, I'll be surprised if we're not killed in the next 48 hours. Come on, let me give you a tour. And I can deal with this mess while you get to work. And it's really pretty obvious. Okay, now, this is the office where I, uh, we, I mean we, equal partners, we, you, senior partner, run the business. Now, this is the computer. It's very secure. We lose this, we're all dead men. This is where the job's come through. Yeah? So you can check it out? Okay? Okay, let's move on. Up here is where you can sleep if you want to. It's very comfortable, and it's clean. It's pretty clean. I mean, it's been cleaned at least once. Come on. Now back here is where we store cargo. Now nothing too dodgy. Mostly untaxed cigarettes, stolen pharmaceuticals, and industrial chemicals. But we'll run pretty much anything. Now back there is where you can store any aircraft that we... I mean, you haven't left out here on the main floor. We've got plenty of room. I think we can probably take all the planes we'd need. But then, I've never had more than one. And over there's where Charlie works. Hey, Charlie! Ah! You'll like Charlie. He's boring, but he's good. He can really make aircraft fly. That's not what I mean. I mean, he can make aircrafts fly better. You should try him out. His work is amazing. Give me a hand with these bodies. But, oh, I better dump these at sea. Ah! Ooh! Ah! Then I got a little radio thing, but I'll be in touch. I am so glad you're here. You're the best friend I've had, and I mean that. Don't let me down! All 
Okay, so as you guys just heard in that cutscene, we're basically just going to be sourcing a product which is going to be one out of eight different options, which I will talk much more about later on in the video because it is pretty important depending on what product you guys do source as each different product will be giving you guys a different amount of product or a different amount of bonus from bulk stock in it, which like I said, I will explain much more in this video about once I get to that point. So what you guys will actually notice is these hangers kind of combine everything from their previous deal into this one DLC. Now what do I mean by that? In the finance and felony update we had the crate warehouses. Now you guys actually have to pay for the crates if you guys remember. Then you have to source them and then you have to bring them back which you would basically sell for double the amount. And what you guys may also notice is everything that you guys were sourcing from the crate warehouses are exactly the same products that you guys will be sourcing for your hangers. However with the crate warehouses all of these products were worth exactly the same. However in your hanger they can differentiate in price however with your hanger you won't have to make the initial investment to source the product so as you guys probably know if you paid eighteen thousand dollars to source free crates for your crate warehouse if someone came over and blew your product up then you guys practically just lost eight thousand dollars whereas if someone comes over and destroys your product when you're doing the hanger resupply you're going to be losing on nothing so it's kind of similar to the vehicle warehouses in that sense that you guys can source as much as you want for as long as you want and it's not going to make a difference to your bank balance whatsoever so you could think of the hangers as being exactly like a hybrid of the vehicle warehouses and the crate warehouses and nothing like the biker businesses or the bunkers as I'm sure you guys are aware where you've got to fill up and then you've got to do nothing it's just a time waiting game where you've got to wait for your product to actually produce itself whereas with this one like I said you guys are able to earn money consistently as much as you play is as much as you're going to earn whereas the other businesses are more for the afk players who like to change things up now and again so just like the vehicle warehouses and the crate warehouses you guys will get greeted with like an introductory mission which will be much much more easier than the actual missions that you guys will get greeted with whilst filling up these crates now it is worth mentioning right off the top i'm going to give you guys throughout this video a bunch of tips and tricks that i use to help me complete these missions but going off the feedback from the community and even me personally playing this i do play gta 5 quite a lot so i'd consider myself an experienced player but for your average player they have been finding these missions pretty difficult i'm not gonna lie boys when the npc enemies turn from buzzards into hydras you just know the levels are going to be raised so in all honesty maybe if you guys are like under level 80 maybe under level 100 and you're not that experienced like you don't have max health capable in gta 5 online yet i would probably stay away from the hangers just for now maybe invest in one of the other businesses like i've said i've done a full breakdown guide on every single big dlc there is i will leave a link to all four of them down low in the description so whether you guys want to know more about the mc businesses the crate warehouses the vehicle warehouses or the bunkers i've done like i said a full guide on all four of those down low in the description however as you guys can see on screen this introductory mission is nothing like the mission that you guys will be getting later on throughout the hangar and in actual fact the hangar missions will range in difficulty from medium hard and very hard now we'll go into full detail how you guys can play the easier missions rather than the harder ones however you guys will be earning bonuses for the harder missions rather than the easier ones which i will explain more when i get to that point however fast forward in this introductory mission it's pretty self-explanatory as i said all you guys have to do is go ahead and pick up an airplane and bring it back to your hangar you are very rarely going to get missions like this unless you guys just play solo however you guys have got no benefit to grinding this out solo you're much much better off always playing with players and i will explain in just a minute why that is the case so as you guys can see right here i go ahead and complete the introductory mission solo and once i go onto the laptop inside my hangar it shows that after one resupply mission i've managed to fill up three supplies it is worth mentioning we can only store a total of 50 crates per time in the hangars now each category as you guys can see right here has 50 spaces and each crate will equivalent to one so it's basically impossible for you guys to have all of these crates filled up at the same time to sell them all at the once. Like I said earlier, I seen one GTA YouTuber with over 100,000 subscribers try and tell people to go ahead and fill up every single product and they'll be worth $4 million when you clearly never even noticed that you can only store 50 crates total 
across all products so you can't even store more than one of these products fully in your hangar before you guys are forced to make a sale because if you guys try and source any more product once you've got 50 crates it will just say storage is full so the fact that this gta youtube is trying to tell you guys yeah it's worth four million dollars and each crate is only worth 10k he just has no idea what he's talking about so it is worth mentioning the big difference that you guys will notice from the introductory mission from when you guys are actually sourcing product yourself is that with the introductory mission it will actually give you guys one supply of three different products and i actually believe that rockstar games have done this on purpose to try and confuse you guys because as you guys can see right here from one resupply mission i got three different products however that is impossible to do when you guys are sourcing for yourself you've actually got to select the product and it's only going to give you that product so by rockstar games it giving you guys one supply of three different products they're naturally going to make sure that you guys are just filling up more than one of these at a time when in actual fact you're much better off just concentrating on two or one product at a time sourcing more than two products is going to be a complete waste of your time and this will make much more sense later on the video once i get around to making the sales now the second thing that rockstar games tried to confuse you guys with about the introductory mission compared to the real life supply missions you guys saw that i was able to get three supplies solo from only doing one mission whereas once i go ahead and source one of these products solo in the future it's only going to give me one supply every time and not three at a time like the introductory missions of course if you guys were getting three supplies every solo run you could easily fill your hanger up in like a day a day and a half but if you guys are only earning one crate per mission it's literally going to take you guys quadruple the time it is if you guys were earning three supplies Supplies per mission and that is one of the benefits that the crate warehouses do have over the hangers is that even if you guys were playing solo resupplying crates it still gave you the option to source three crates at a time and if you guys can remember every time you selected three crates it didn't necessarily mean there was going to be three separate crates it just means it was equivalent to three crates so a lot of the time it would just give you guys one van that counted as three crates whereas this will never happen in the hangar mission if you guys go ahead and start this solo you're not going to like rob one airplane and it's not going to count as three supplies like the introductory mission it will always count as only one supply now giving you guys a quick example of some of these missions as you guys can see right here a lot of the time these missions will actually give you guys aircraft that you can use in the missions you don't necessarily have to use these aircrafts i know for a fact some of my friends personally like to use their own jets or even use buzzards or like oppressors because you guys are maybe more used to using those vehicles you might find it a lot more easier but at the same time maybe some of you guys don't own any of these jets yet so it gives you guys a good opportunity to try out some of the new vehicles see what they're all about before you guys do part with millions of dollars which they do cost but as i mentioned you guys don't have to use the dedicated vehicles unless it's the one with the cargo bob or the air ambulance you guys will notice you'll say in the middle bottom of your screen in blue get into a certain vehicle that means that you guys are forced to use that vehicle in that mission and there is quite a few missions that do require that and i have noticed they are usually the more easier products to source of course the easier products to source will give you guys less money but like i said if you've got a better success rate in the long run it might be better for you guys if you're not that experienced at gta 5 however i'm not going to spend too much time showing off the missions in this video because i want you guys to go ahead and experience that yourself i'll cover the more difficult ones but as you guys can see right here they are pretty self-explanatory they usually just go ahead and destroy destroy something or to either go ahead and rob something and it's usually along the lines of using the carpet bomb in the airplane so it's very very simple and very very straightforward what i will say is most of the airplanes they do give you do come fully equipped so if you guys don't know how to use the equipment on them once you guys can hear that beeping noise like an enemy jet is locked onto you then you guys want to press rb or r1 to use the flare i did see quite a few people confused on how they work you don't ignite them first before you go into battle you ignite them once the lock on on your vehicle has happened but like i said after playing it for a little while you guys should all get used to it what you can also do instead of using the flares just do as i do on screen as soon as an enemy locks onto me i just do a few back spins a few side spins and they're very very easy to avoid and it is worth mentioning this resupply mission is also for narcotics which is 
part of the top tier group which will offer you guys the most amount of money but at the same time is more difficult than the other two categories like i said i will explain much more about this later on in the video but just as a heads up these are the type of missions that you guys will be getting in the top tier they're very much more based around jets and heavy artillery rather than the basic ones of just going to pick something up and deliver it to your hangar now what i have also noticed is when you are playing a resupply mission that you usually have to shoot it out of the sky a lot of people think it's better off to get out of your vehicle and go pick up the supplies when in actual fact that is the worst thing to do because these jets do not hold back they will spray the hell out of you i've seen over level 300s really struggle on these narcotic missions because they went to go out of the vehicle to pick up the supplies and they literally just get pummeled with bullets by a hydra before they can even lock onto it when in actual fact a lot of these jets that they do give you can actually glide across the water so to give you guys an example of this as you guys can see right here i parachute out when i'm doing another resupply mission for chemicals which is also part of the top tier which is the most difficult and as you guys can see right here the hydra is absolutely going ham on me i literally could not step foot next to this crate box without getting pummeled with like a thousand rockets at once by this one hydra as you guys can see right here once again i thought i got happy i managed to pick up the box and bang two seconds later i get sprayed down by this jet so if you guys do get hit with one of these style of missions definitely be sure to call out either an oppressor as i do on screen as you guys can see so you can quickly boost into it and get the hell out of there or just call up like a bomb proof car like an apc or the best option like i said right at the start is to do exactly what i do here just don't bother leaving the vehicle that they give you because like i said they can fly pretty close to the water so even if the product drops in the water as you guys saw on screen you can easily go ahead and pick it up by just flying very close to it now another tip i'm going to give you guys to pay attention to so you guys can realize whether it's going to be one of these more difficult missions is in the bottom right they will always give you guys a 20 minute countdown for the much more difficult missions now what you guys may want to notice is it did take me around just over seven minutes to actually shoot down the jets and pick up the parcel so to complete the mission then by the time i fly back to the hangar this mission took me just about over 10 minutes and i was pretty new to this this was one of my earlier missions so just over 10 minutes isn't too bad to complete a resupply mission however as i did mention to you guys earlier because i'm doing this exact mission solo i'm only going to be receiving one supply for this difficult mission which is currently only going to offer you 10k for that one supply drop of course that will increase the more we get like i said i'll explain more about that in a second but if you guys sit back and think about it even if that crate was worth double so 20k right now if the mission takes over 10 minutes long it's not really worth it as you guys will have to do that 50 times to fill up your hangout which will take way too long so as you guys can see on screen right now, I've only got four out of a possible 50 supplies that I can store in my hangar. And it is worth mentioning, if you guys were trying to source the exact same product directly after you've just resupplied it, you will have a two minute cooldown period, which once again, isn't the biggest or longest wait in the world. But I do respect the fact that Rockstar Games have tried to keep, when it comes to resupplying, very simple. You've got one person doing it, we're gonna give you guys one crate. And it literally adds on for every player that you've got in your CEO or mc that is another point worth mentioning you guys can do all of these hangar missions registered as an mc or a ceo just like the bunker so as you guys can see on screen right now i've got one extra player in my ceo organization so by me just having another player in my organization instead of me getting one crate now every time i resupply it's definitely going to guarantee me a minimum of two crates and when i say crates it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be two of us have to pick one thing up because there's a ton of new vehicles in this dlc for example in this mission there's only one vehicle that we have to pick up and because it's a two-seater vehicle that will count as both suppliers in that one vehicle even though i don't need my friend to get in it he could literally sit right at the back of my hangar do no work whatsoever and i'm going to be earning double the amount of supplies from my previous mission when i've done it solo now secondly a massive tip that i'm going to give you guys and i have spoke about this in previous videos it's a trick that i always use like i said the npcs in these missions are considerably much more stronger than anything else in gta 5 at the moment so what you guys always want to do as you guys can see on screen right now i'm getting shot by about five enemies from all sorts of angles you want to pull up your interaction menu always 
just go to the shop and stack up on snacks before you guys do go on a little resupply run because the little trick that I actually use is to keep my interaction menu up and when I'm getting shot by about 10 different enemies is to keep on eating the snacks in the background so you keep on refilling your health and you can actually use your gun at the same time of keeping your interaction menu open so as you guys can see right there I did have it closed this time however I quickly pull it up because I remember the tactic what I was using before this one there isn't too many enemies my friend could really help me out in this situation knowing that I was trying to make a video but like I said when you're an MVP and you know all these little tips and tricks you really have nothing to worry about so as you guys can see right here I go ahead and jack the vehicle practically took out all the enemies by myself and oh look who shows up my friend decides to show up so I could easily just drive off and deliver this thing right now however like I said it's a two-seater these are new missions and what you guys will also notice is they will give you a ton of unreleased vehicles in these missions that Rockstar Games will be drip feeding to us throughout the next month or so so if you guys do pay attention to the bottom right the timer this mission with an extra player my CEO so it should naturally be a lot harder than me doing the solo one that I previously done could be done in half the time and I'm going to be earning double the supplies so with that information I don't know why anyone would ever grind these solo so it is capped at the maximum four crates per resupply mission and of course you guys will need four players to do that you'll never be able to get four crates from having under four players the exact amount of players you guys have in your MC or your CEO will determine how many crates you get and just to prove so as you guys can see right here I did go ahead and get another member of my crew so we have exactly three members now in my CEO and we get exactly three crates from this resupply mission and as I did mention the previous mission you guys do have the potential to try out a ton of new vehicles that haven't even been released with this DLC throughout these missions and my personal favorite one out of the lot is this one right here this is the savage helicopter and I'm not gonna lie boys this thing is an absolute beast if it gives you this option in one of the missions always get in it this thing comes with homing missiles and a carpet bomb so what you guys will notice is they do give you guys a ton of different vehicles but with similar missions so this is quite a common mission that i noticed popped up a lot over the last two days is to go ahead and destroy the jammers that are usually located on top of roofs and like i said depending on what suits you guys best you can use the missiles or the carpet bomb for this specific mission i would suggest you guys go ahead and use the carpet bomb all you have to do is drive over it and when you're like two seconds right before the building then you want to press a on the xbox or X on the PlayStation to release a barrage of bombs on top of it and as you guys can clearly see right here I managed to get two done in less than 20 seconds so a very very simple and straightforward mission and it is also worth mentioning this is for narcotics auto which is the highest selling product out of the lot so it doesn't necessarily mean if you guys are going for the highest selling one that the missions are going to be extremely difficult every time it is just completely random exactly like the crate warehouses however as you guys can see on screen as soon as we're done destroying the jammers because there's three of us in the CEO the game gives us three crates to go ahead and collect and what you guys also will notice is a lot of these missions where you have to do a task first then collect the narcotics it's usually on the go driven by a brigade and I've seen ton of my crew members get worried when it is the brigade they try and park their car in front of it they try and ram it off the road they're, they're worried about destroying it don't worry guys the product is inside of the brigade honestly I've literally seen about 20 different crew members drive the brigade all the way back to the hangar or even like spend about 10 minutes just trying to park next to the thing because what you will notice is your homing missiles won't lock onto the brigade you do have to be pretty good with your gun but as you guys can see right here just drive it really low to the ground hit it with two rockets and then bang the supplies should pop out the back of the brigade I know for a fact a ton of you guys would have also been confused at this and would have spent way too long trying to jack a brigade and drive it all the way back to your hangar where you're just an open target for other people in free roam and as you guys just saw even though I'm earning triple the amount of supplies that I've done from my solo supply mission it was around the same difficulty level if anything that mission was much more easier it just took a little longer to do so as you guys can see right here I went ahead and got another crew member into my crew so now we have a full CEO organization of four players and what that will actually do is guarantee me four crates every single time I run a supply mission which 
is by far the best method that all of you guys should do. Even if you're inviting random players from your lobby into your organization, the more the merrier. Although I will be giving you guys a heads up on a brand new GTA 5 crew that I am putting together, as well as letting you guys know how you guys can find players on the same platform as you guys. Now, as I did mention earlier, it's all good if you guys do want to use your own vehicles, but like I said, certain missions will require to use a certain vehicle that they do give it to you. So as you guys can see right here, when it's in blue and it says get in a specific vehicle, you must use that vehicle in order to trigger the next point of the mission. And just to prove this to you guys, as you guys can see right here, I do go back inside my hangar to get my own personal aircraft to use this mission for, which I've spent over 5 million goddamn dollars on. So I thought I'd at least use it a couple times in the video. I couldn't use it right now i can call it in later on the mission once the supplies are located however to actually complete the mission you do have to use that designated vehicle now of course the max members in a ceo organization is four players so you do just need two players to sit in each of the rogues however if you guys set up an mc organization you can have up to eight players in your mc so you just need two players to get in the rogue and the rest of you can run around in jets buzzards do whatever you guys like to do so you're always much better off playing in mcs because you can fit more players into your group however you will never be earning more than four supplies even though you might have five six players in your organization now this is another style of mission as you guys can see on screen it's very similar to the one with the jammers however instead of jammers on top of the roof you're going to just have enemies a bunch of groups of organizations whereas the jammers don't shoot you back these guys will however like i said these aircrafts are extremely op and they're just fun to use and try out anyway if you guys are going to be spending multi millions of dollars on these aircrafts you at least want to know how to use them so definitely go ahead and try them out and like i mentioned earlier on if the supplies are in vehicles and there are two cr they will naturally count as two products in that one vehicle as you guys can see right here as soon as i get into this helicopter it counts as two supplies in the bottom right and because these helis have got no weapons as you guys can just see i tried to select missiles and it's selected unarmed you're much better off getting one of your friends to stay in a jet or a buzzard or an oppressor right behind you just to cover you every single time as there is no point of both you being in an unarmed vehicle whilst transporting it so me personally whenever i'm resupplying i'll always try and set up an mc and just try and get as many people as possible as you guys can see right here i have eight players in my mc organization right now and when i resupply yes i only get four but like i said if someone rage quits someone gets disconnected we have some random players coming over to us we have four other players who are there offering backup so just practically making this mission unfailable now moving over to exactly how much you guys are earning depending on what crates you use and depending on how many crates you have now you guys will need to have a considerable amount of crates to earn the bonus a good amount to aim for is at least 25 out of 50 crates total so you guys can earn a bonus on that select crate now i'll tell you guys which crates are the most valuable in just a second however as you guys will have just like me you you will always have three different products filled up because of that first introductory mission so first things first is you want to get rid of one of these products so as you guys can see right now i've filled up 50 out of a possible 50 crates in my entire warehouse spread across three different products i'm currently getting offered a bonus for my narcotics because i have more than 25 of those however for the other two i'm getting offered no bonus because i have them in low quantity so what you guys do want to do is go ahead and sell the counterfeit goods as they are worth the least out of the lot i'm only going to be getting 10k for this sale mission but like i said this will give you guys the good opportunity to see what some of the sale missions are like because these sale missions can be quite tedious if you guys don't know what you're doing i will cover these slightly more towards the end of the video just giving you guys a few tips in case you guys do end up getting destroyed by a random player or you end up crashing your jet into a wall there is a way that you guys can still save your product which is a massive benefactor i'm not gonna lie if you guys spend all day grinding your hangar out and then you end up crashing into a random bush and it blows up and you lose everything there is not a worse feeling in the world and another thing that is definitely worth mentioning 
these final sale missions aren't going to range in difficulty depending how much you are selling. They are always going to be random no matter whether you guys are selling one crate or you're selling all 50 at the same time. I have got a wide variation of these missions and I've sold a wide variation of product. So one style of mission is like this one right here where it only requires one player to be in a delivery vehicle and the rest of you can go and destroy enemies and all he's got to do is drop it off. It's very simple, very straightforward but like I said for only 10k this final sale mission really shouldn't be this difficult let's just take things into perspective if you guys were to come onto this dlc yesterday or on tuesday you're a solo player you're probably going to go off feedback from previous dlcs like the vehicle warehouses or even the crate warehouses now as you guys would know when you sell in lower quantities there's always a less amount of delivery vehicles whether this be your bunker or your weed farm if you've only got a few bit of products you could easily always do these solo whereas if i was doing this solo because it's only 10k you'd think in the back of your mind you could do it solo this i probably wouldn't be able to do because i have me and a jet right now taking out all these enemies i have another friend in the actual delivery vehicle and there's another guy in the helicopter so realistically you need at least two people one for cover and one for the delivery vehicle otherwise this mission would just drag on for way too long and i'd rather just fail the mission on purpose not get my 10k but at least i get rid of of the product because that's all we want to do we just want to make space in our hangar so we can get as much product crammed into two different products as possible than the 10k that i'm going to be getting from selling it solo and by the way ron also does take a cut out of these missions so i don't even get 10k for this as you guys are about to see in a second i only get nine thousand dollars however it's not the nine thousand dollars that's important it's the valuable space now that we've got in our hangar to fill up our other product so to make things very clear for you guys as you guys can see right here i've got more than 25 crates of one product the chemicals so now i'm going to be receiving a bonus and this will steadily increase the more i get of that same product so as you guys can see right here i have 26 crates of chemicals usually and what everyone on youtube like to report on the first day that would only net you guys two hundred and sixty thousand dollars however because we've got it in bulk that has jumped up now to 351 and by having 34 crates it jumps up to 459,000. and by getting an extra three crates on top of that it jumps up to just under half a million and if you guys go ahead and get 41 crates that will increase again by 53k so you guys are getting 553,000 and like i said the more you get the more increases 45 crates will boost that to well over 607,000. and if you guys go ahead and get 48 crates that's 648 however by getting the 50 out of 50 crates you guys will be able to earn a very nice eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars from sourcing one product alone so if you guys do what i said earlier on the video and you resupply every time with four crates you guys will be able to complete a full product after only 12 source missions which like i said average around seven to ten minutes so it could easily be done in under two hours so that is by far the best method to grind out these new hangers is to concentrate on one product alone so you guys can get the maximum 70 percent bonus now not all of these products are going to offer you guys 70 percent increase and i'm not gonna lie this took me goddamn ages to find out filling up every single one of these so i can work out which ones actually offer you guys the biggest bonuses so by far the top three you guys want to do that will offer you guys 70 percent bonus are the narcotics the medical supplies and the chemicals the second highest earner will be 60% bonus. That will be the animal products, the art, and the jewelry. And finally, the least biggest earner will be the tobacco and the counterfeit goods, which will only offer you guys a 50% bonus once you fill it up. As you guys can see on screen right here, I'm only getting offered 750K for filling up all of these, whereas I'm getting offered 850K for doing my narcotics or my chemicals. So that is by far the best method to grind out these hangers is to just concentrate on one of those three products that offer you guys the most amount of money however if you guys can think back right at the start of the video when i ran this mission solo there was a two minute cooldown period before i could source the same product if you guys do play with more than four players or even four players that cooldown period will jump up to six minutes so like i said if you guys may be like me and you really haven't got the patience to wait around for six minutes a good little tip or a tactic or method 
method that I've personally been using is to concentrate on two out of three of the highest selling products. Because we have a potential of 50 spaces in our hangar, because there's no cooldown period to source a different product from the one you just sourced, you could easily source 25 of two of the highest selling products. So for example, the narcotics and the chemicals. And because you guys have more than 20 of the crates in that category, you guys would be offered a bonus. Now, as you guys can see on screen right now, I actually done it with the chemicals and the jewelry because at this point I didn't know what was the highest selling products. In fact, no one in the world knew. Hence the reason I probably saw over 500 comments from you guys asking me what was the best product to source. And that is exactly what I've been doing for the last 48 hours trying to find out for you guys. So like I said, only concentrate on the narcotics, the medical supplies or the chemicals because they are going to be earning you guys the biggest bonus. And once half of them fills up, you can easily sell that product. And then once you sold that product, just concentrate on filling up the rest of the other chemicals. So you guys have the potential to earn the full bonus from a full 50 out of 50 crate, as well as half the bonus from another product. But you're going to be saving a bunch of time having to wait for a cooldown period. Of course, another way to do this is just to wait for that cooldown period to finish and what you guys can go ahead and do is do like some vip work like sightsee or headhunter which usually only lasts around five six minutes anyway so you guys can complete one of those get rewarded with a nice 25k cash so your associates are kept happy then you can just go ahead and repeat the process so to keep things very simple and very straightforward you can either concentrate on filling up one product at a time and do some vip work in between filling that product up or you guys can fill up two products at the same time and just sell one when it reaches halfway so you're at least getting a bonus for one of them and then gradually fill up the other one so you're receiving the full payout for at least one out of the two products as well as not having to wait for any cooldown period to end so like i said it's completely up to you two different ways that you guys can grind this out to make the most amount of money now as you guys can see on screen this is one example of the sale missions all the sale missions are different and they all do require you to use one of the aircraft vehicles now i was going to include gameplay of different styles of these final sale missions however i thought about it and i'm much better off just showing you guys how you can save your product in case you guys get destroyed in these final sale missions plus i'll just save you guys a bunch of time by showing you it this way because it is completely random what final sale mission you are going to get at the end so by me showing you this way rather than all the individual different missions you guys no matter what mission you get you'll never lose your product even if you get destroyed by a random online player or npc now it is worth mentioning you won't be able to save your entire product but you are going to only lose about two or three crates which is much more better than losing the entire thing and taking a risk of failing the mission so a lot of people don't know that the gt online servers save or back up every three minutes in the game so what that means is as you guys can see right now if you are delivering a full product and for some crazy reason things start going left as you guys can see on screen i've been sent tons of clips of this happening to people where they've been trying to land these vehicles and they've just bounced on their sideways and started glitching out this is quite likely already happened to one of you guys if this happens make sure in that first three minutes of you guys failing the mission that you pull up your xbox home button or your ps home button and quickly dashboard the game in other words quit the game now as long as you guys have done that within the three minute period of you messing up you should only lose a tiny portion of your product as you guys can see right here i spawn back into a new game i head straight onto my laptop and i had 13 crates before i made the mission however when i go back i still have 11 crates and that is much better off dashboarding quickly and only losing two crates rather than losing your entire product so hopefully you guys do appreciate me including this also in this video because i know this can be a major factor for a lot of guys if you guys end up getting destroyed and you lose everything like i said earlier in the video there really isn't a worse feeling in the world grinding out for hours and then you just get no reward whatsoever so hopefully this will prevent this happening to all of you guys nonetheless that's going to do it for me guys hopefully you guys do appreciate me going into full detail about everything you guys need to know when it comes to making money with this new dlc as well as including a bunch of tips and tricks that'll hopefully cause you guys less stress in the long run and make your money grinding much more easier the great thing about this video being on youtube and not tv is that if i've left anything out and you guys got any more questions i don't think i've left anything unturned in this video but if for any reason you guys have got any questions leave a comment down 
down below under this video and I'm going to be reading through every single comment for the next few days and I'll try my best to get back to you guys as quick as I can. Nonetheless, that is going to do it from me guys. Hopefully this video has helped you guys out in some way, shape or form. If it has, all I ask is you drop a like down below and also do feel free to subscribe as I do post daily GTA 5 videos. You guys could probably tell by my voice now, I've been up for like three days straight putting this video together for you guys. So hopefully you guys do appreciate that and also stay tuned about some news about a new GTA 5 crew dropping tomorrow. So make sure you guys have notifications on my channel so you don't miss that. Nonetheless, thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll see you in my next video. Peace!